Listen to me, lady. Shh. Silence is golden, Monitor. And what else is golden? Hmm? The Monitor's Pledge. Lunchtime, breaks, and after-school library time. Your golden room. Yeah, but I'm not even a... Shh. I haven't said I'm... Nonsense. Think not what your school can do for you, but what you can do for your school. Ghost Hunter is a great example of the 7 out of 10 PlayStation 2 title, a title you may have picked up from Blockbuster to spend a weekend with back in the day. While you could find better titles, you could also find plenty worse. It's one of those titles that's flown more under the radar from this time frame. The gameplay is fine, if awkward and undercooked at points. It's the characters, the locations, the writing, and the humor that do the heavy lifting. Ghost Hunter has a great balance of humor and horror. Although more emphasis is on the humor, it's able to get dark at a moment's notice without tonal whiplash. It's one of the better games I've come across that are able to execute on its humor. As far as overlooked horror titles, it's one of the lesser ones, but it has its merits that are worth experiencing. Ghost Hunter kicks off in a distant land in a distant time. A hooded man enters a castle, in pursuit of another. Turns out this hooded man isn't from this time. Things kick into early 2000s high gear with those slow motion effects. The man he's pursuing has taken a woman captive. Kate! We cut back to an abandoned high school on the outskirts of Detroit in the present day. A couple years back, there were 10 students murdered at the school in one night. One Professor Brooke was responsible, but he vanished, leaving no evidence behind. Demolition crews have been hearing strange noises and called on the police to investigate. On the scene are Anna Steele and her new partner, Lazarus Jones, our protagonist, a country boy new to Detroit. According to the manual, this is the first day for Lazarus on the Detroit Police Department. Like another notable protagonist starting their first day as a cop, they're in for quite the day. Lazarus Jones is quite the name. While writing this script, I wanted to write Laszlo at several points. Laszlo Jones being a radio host in the Grand Theft Auto games. Anna Steele is quite the name as well for a cop. Both have a keen sense of fashion. With a Norge turtleneck, Anna is rocking the midriff, a popular style choice at the time. Lazarus is donning a skinny tie. Both are stylish like today's sponsor, that being Project Orochi, a streetwear clothing brand inspired by Japanese mythology and art. They also have designs inspired by various games, such as For Honor and the Dark Souls series, like this design of Pontiff Sullivan. Other designs include Japanese landscapes and art. Use the promo code BOULDERPUNCH for a 10% discount. Shipping is free within North America. Check the description or the pinned comment for a link to their website. And now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Splitting up, Lazarus heads to the basement to investigate. Some eerie voices haunt these hallways. Lazarus comes across a strange contraption in the basement. Curiosity gets the better of him, although who can blame him? We reunite with Anna before the man we saw in the intro snatches her away. 
Okay, so... so you left me, and then went down to the base. Don't move. What are you doing? I said don't move. Getting the backup power up and running, Lazarus has a chat with an AI that gives context to what's going on. It's up to Lazarus to round up these ghosts that he's unleashed and rescue Anna. Can you hear me? Scanning. Intruder. Male. Caucasian. Super normal sight. Suitable candidate. Listen, this, uh, this machine, it, 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 it released something, a drug or a, a gas. I, I, I was knocked down and I know I'm seeing things. I, I just, and now I'm talking to a box. Jesus. Strategy for candidate. Capture the dead. Correction. Recapture the dead. No gas, no drugs. Ghosts. Ghosts? What are you talking about? A candidate? Hey! Hey! Can you hear me? Estimate, you can be heard in Texas. Advise composure, initiating training. Recapture ghosts. Training essential. Training? What? Where's my partner? What have you done with her? No information. Recapture ghosts. Generate essential power. Costs none. Benefits, spectral gateways open, woman found. Initiate training. Initiate no, training. No, no, that's Initiate it. That's it. Training. I'm out of here. While we're dealing with ghosts, there's plenty of life to the characters in Ghost Hunter. From the writing, the voice work, their appearance and animations, it does the heavy lifting and making Ghost Hunter a memorable experience. Starting with our protagonist, Lazarus Jones. He's a wisecracker and a smartass. Who better than Rob Paulson to voice a character like Lazarus? A voice you recognize in an instant. Hey, hey, this better not be scare the little old country boy night, okay? I bet you got a welcoming committee, guys from Division down in the basement wearing Halloween masks, a body fresh off the slab, swinging from the rafters. <laughs> you think you're worth that kind of effort? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I look like a prankster? <sighs> Go to work. 30. Okay, 30 it is, partner. I look like a prankster. <laughs> First time I'd get stuck with one of Charlie's Angels. Jane Bond. Great. In a way, Lazarus feels like a prototype version of Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series, if Nathan Drake took up law enforcement. I love this one moment of a reaction to a Bikini Girl poster. Too bad he can't swim. You think as a cop he'd be able to. I wish I'd learned to swim. Granted, it's not like swimming is a requirement for joining most police forces. I'm sure for Detroit, it's even more lax. What makes the character of Lazarus work is how he bounces off others. It's a lost art in most modern day writing across mediums where everyone tries to one-up each other with quips. You need the wisecracker to bounce off someone who is a bit more straight-laced. While they don't have a ton of screen time together, Anna works as the straight-laced character to contrast with the hijinks of Lazarus. What I meant was, what are we- I know what you meant. She likes me. No doubt about it, she likes me. The AI we meet also acts as a contrast with a twist. His deadpan thoughts work well bouncing off Lazarus. He doesn't take crap from him. He's like a more deadpan HK-47 from Knights of the Old Republic. All right, look. I'm gonna count to five, and then... Concur candidates enumerating strategy. Time is of the essence. Please listen. Your hunting must begin as soon as possible. One. In brief, your weapons are useless. You cannot kill that which does not live. However, you can contain the spirit. Two. The grenade has two functions. Firstly, it will anchor the spirit into the realm of the living, allowing you to weaken it. Three. And second, four. The grenade will capture a weakened ghost, trapping it in the array. Five. Recognized nine millimeter firearm. Recognized threatening stance towards a digital entity, an ally. Irrational response. Candidate functioning with excessive nervous energy. There are rare points in our travels where the AI will talk with us. Otherwise, we'll have a chat when we return to the school basement between levels. It's one of those cases where I wish there was more dialogue between the AI and Lazarus. Always leave you wanting more is a rule of show business. Ghost Hunter is a great example of it. Funny to contrast Ghost Hunter to most modern games, where you could chop dialogue down by a wide margin with no loss, where you wish the characters would shut up for a moment. Ghost Hunter is a great game as reference in how to do humor in games. The studio, SCE Cambridge, were no strangers to adding humor in their games. Take a look at their prior works like the Medieval series. And then we have our antagonist, Hawksmoor. He's the one who captured Anna. A former Knight of the Crusades, he seeks immortality through human flesh. He has such a commanding presence, thanks to his voice actor. 
That being the late Sir Michael Gambon, a legendary theater actor, best known as the second Dumbledore from the Harry Potter movies. It was always a joy when this character popped up. He steals the show in every scene he's in. There's one scene in the game highlight where he gets to flex those Shakespearean chops. So foul and fair day I have not seen. Ah, an audience at last. Before I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more, Macbeth doth murder sleep. Is this a dagger I see before me? No, it's a Glock 17. Police issue. Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Take your tights off, worm boy. You've lost your audience. I don't know how they got him for the role. He only has three listed video game roles. One of them playing Dumbledore in a Harry Potter game. Another is from The Elder Scrolls Online. Whenever you need to give a character a larger-than-life theatrical presence, Get a theater actor to voice them. You can't do much better than Sir Michael Gammon. In our travels, we'll come across other great characters. They make the most of their short screen time. Before that, let's go into how gameplay works for Ghost Hunter. As the name of the game, one key element of gameplay is ghost hunting. We need to round up these ghosts we've unleashed. To do so, we need to use a capture grenade. Once attached to a ghost, we're given a timer before the grenade detaches and returns to us. The more health the enemy has, the shorter the timer will be. Using our weapons, we reduce their health to zero, at which point we'll capture them. I love the moment of capturing a ghost. The sound design and the way the ghost folds within itself is all great. You can see that Ghostbusters influence. Even then, the game never feels like a one-to-one -one tribute to Ghostbusters. It pulls from a wide variety of inspirations. Weapons vary from using ghost energy to bullets. Ghost energy guns include a sniper rifle and the flamethrower equivalent, the spectral lasso. To replenish ghost energy, you need to capture ghosts or shoot rats. It's not a delicate juggling act of maintaining your resources. Ghost energy is plentiful from combat encounters. Guns requiring conventional ammunition, like the shotgun and grenade launcher, are more limited. As long as you're thorough in your exploration, you'll come across more ammo. You don't need to attach a capture grenade to damage enemies. If you want, you can shoot an enemy and then attach the capture grenade on them. There's no real point to doing so. For several enemies, attaching the capture grenade will stun them, giving you free shots to whittle down their health. While the system works well, it does feel like there's more they want to do with it. As if you need to use a capture grenade first to do some damage, or you need to damage an enemy a certain amount before you could attach a capture grenade. There's no penalty for tossing a capture grenade on an enemy with little damage. All that happens is that it returns to you, and you need to attach it again. I will have loved to see something like a risk-reward system. Attach a capture grenade to an enemy. If you don't capture them in time, depending on how much health they had left, you couldn't use your capture grenade on them for a set period. Or other ghosts that you need to get up in their face to attach a capture grenade instead of tossing it at them. This additional step of capturing a ghost does create a different rhythm to combat compared to most third-person shooters. You remove enemies from the field one ghost at a time. I did find myself fighting with the controls at several times, especially with the sniper rifle. You can fire and move while standing, but you can't move and fire while crouching. There's even a cover system in Ghost Hunter. It's always interesting to play a game with a cover system before Gears of War. It's clunky to use, and in most cases, I would avoid using it. Ghost Hunter, beyond a few stretches near the end, isn't a difficult game. You could tank damage with a little issue during sniper fights. It was a bit of a surprise to struggle with these controls. By this time frame in 3D gaming, most games had overcome these issues. It's nothing around the camera, but the controls themselves. To note for this video, I played the North American release, one which came out in August of 2004. Why so long between the North American release and the European release in December of 2003? Ghost Hunter didn't sell well in Europe. As a first-party title, Sony published Ghost Hunter in Europe, but decided not to publish it for North America. Bandai Namco would instead publish it. During this time frame, the studio made, as stated in an interview, over 1,500 fixes and improvements. On the combat front, they tweaked the controller layout, changed how fast you move while aiming, and tweaked the cover system. Ghosts have more health. I did try out the European version, and you can feel the improvements they made. Even then, the updated North American release did have issues as I mentioned earlier. Another difference is the European version doesn't have a countdown timer, instead using a bar. It made it difficult to figure out how much time I had before the grenade detached from the enemy. There are a nice variety of ghosts to deal with. 
One highlight are the poltergeists. They're invisible. You need to use smoke to draw them out to capture them, whether using something in the environment or the smoke ammo on your grenade launcher. They are the game's most involved encounters in getting them out in the open. Or for the more ridiculous, how about alligators wielding chainsaws in the swamp section? Or for the unsettling, how about these teddy bears turning into giant grotesque ghosts? The other main component of Ghost Hunter's gameplay is the astral sections. We take control of a ghost at certain locations to create a path forward. That outfit of hers doesn't leave much to the imagination. She must be freezing. Wait a minute. You've just come out from inside me. You're a ghost? Look, I'm sorry, I just don't understand. But you can hear me, right? Okay, well... Hi! Well, look, it's not exactly easy knowing what to say, but you know, it's, uh... Well, it's been good to have you aboard. Fine, you go ahead and laugh, Astral. Just remember, I never exactly invited you inside me, okay? That was your thing, not mine. I love the transition between Lazarus to the Astral, or the other way around. These sections are a nice palate cleanser from these sections as Lazarus. The sound design does heavy lifting and creating a relaxing mood. Later in the game, these sections feature great music tracks. Why they didn't play earlier, I don't know. They complement the feel of these Astral sections. As the Astral, we could go to places that Lazarus can't reach or swim through. As we progress through Ghost Hunter, she'll gain more abilities to progress forward. The puzzles here are straightforward. Switch to first person view to see what objects you can interact with. Use one of your abilities to advance. Most of the time when you get a new ability, that's the one you use to solve an upcoming puzzle. There's little use of mixing abilities together to overcome roadblocks. There is a game highlight near the end where we get the ability to take over enemies. You could use them to clear a path forward and can attack other enemies if you want. This section is far more involved in what you need to do compared to the other astral sections, something that Ghost Hunter needed more of. These sections are enjoyable, and I enjoyed the relaxing atmosphere. That said, there is more they could have done to make them more engaging. Have puzzles that need you to use several abilities to clear a way forward for Lazarus. With that, let's go through the major beats and highlights of Ghost Hunter. So, spoilers ahead. With more gear and an outfit change, Lazarus begins his journey to find Anna. The AI tells us to seek out his creator, Professor Brooke, the man responsible for the 10 murders at the school a couple years back, or so it seems. With further power restored, we can use a portal to take us elsewhere. There's a high chance that we'll find the Professor and Anna. Hey, any reason to go of Detroit's fine with me. The first location the portal takes us to is Oakville, a ghost town in the deep south, both from a figurative and literal standpoint. People, we have no choice. The decision has been made. Whatever you may think, Oakville is regarded as a ghost town. Let's face it, it is a ghost town these days. Wake up to reality. Whole families have left. Businesses have closed down. The time has come to admit defeat. My friends, a town without children is a town without a future. Sad as it is, Oakville can linger as a memorial for the dear people we've lost. The classic swamp level. This is the game's weakest level. It's not bad, there are a lot of great moments along the way. The issue is that it wears out its welcome by the time we return to the school, something that the forthcoming levels don't suffer from. 
This level kicks off with a stealth section. Ah, uh, the four stealth section. It's not a big deal here. You need to follow this one ghost you cannot kill from a distance. It will open up doors that Lazarus cannot. If it spots you, it will stop what it's doing. Go back into hiding and let it continue. Doesn't add anything to the game, but it's not a huge drag. It's a low stakes for stealth section. Early on, we'll run to another one of Ghost Hunter's colorful characters, that being Lady de Montford, part of a once prosperous family in Oakville. While I'm using an emulator with upscaled resolution, Ghost Hunter has to be one of the better looking PS2 games. The limitations of the system led to developers getting more creative, with strong art direction doing the heavy lifting, something that tends to be a lost art in the modern day. She doesn't get a ton of screen time, but Ghost Hunter makes the most of it. The great animations, the strong art direction, and humorous writing are on full display here. Don't take another step, please, Mr. Fancy Bridges. Okay, you just keep calm, ma'am. I'm a police officer. A police officer? You're human. How did you get here? And what are you doing snooping around my house? I'll use this gun to defend my virtue, young stranger. Make no mistake about it. Calm down. You don't need your gun. Why I'm here is... Well, it's a long story, man, but basically, I was... Skip it then, Hanson. Listen. You have to help me. They're coming for the children. You have to do something. Let's just start from the beginning, can we? Okay, nice and calm. Who exactly... The spirits! They'll be here any minute. Normally, my son can deal with them, but he's been called away. Will you help us? I can see you're a sensitive young man. Okay, I'll I'll go take a look around. You stay here, please, ma'am. Uh, I could maybe use some backup out here. Do you have a phone I could use? A phone? They'll be here any minute. Backup indeed. Comes in here tramping dirt all over a dignified lady's floor. Phones in the hallway. No charge. At various points throughout, the game will drop us notes or Lazarus will talk. A short blurb, a hint of what we need to do to progress. We need to find the missing piece. If not that, a note will give us a hint of what we need to do. No doubt they add several of these for the North American version. Notes instead of a voice due to not getting a second chance to get the voice actors back in the booth. There are sections where it's not 100% clear of what you need to do next to proceed. And I don't mean that from a modern gaming standpoint. The kind where game developers will use people like Dark Side Phil's examples of how to guide players. Where they never take the kid gloves off. I want you to watch what the player does here as he boats around. Look where we are, we're back. Okay, so in this example, the player is exploring the hub, they've been correctly taught the shock arrow mechanic. This was a common complaint in the reviews for the European version of Ghost Hunter. Yes, game journalists have never been the best at games, but 20 years ago, standards were a bit higher. The game doesn't do the best at jobs of guiding the player through the environment. It can be unclear at times of what you need to do without a note. I'm not saying the game needs to spell out everything like you expect from a modern game. There's a big difference in going, oh, that's what I need to do, versus, how was I supposed to know that? Ghost Hunter has a few cases of the latter. After a case of cutscene incompetence, we get an introduction to some of the remaining citizens of Oakville. Once again, they're full of life and make the most of their screen time. Well, how'd me, slicker? You ran us a merry little jig, no mistake about that. So what you doing at the edge of the civilized world? Consorting with that there de Montfort hag? Look, I don't know who or what you people are. All I know is you're in a lot of trouble. Now you've been accused of attempted kidnapping. You've just assaulted a police officer. And if you don't release me right away, I'll be happy to add holding a hostage to the list. A long man, huh? Well, that just about seals it. No way we're letting you go now. The law's never done us folks any favors. I'll take that right there off your hands. Dainty little pink girly hands that they are. <laughs> Turns out these fellows do know the professor and the astral, clearing up any issues they had with Lazarus. <laughs> well, I'll be. If it ain't the professor's girl. Where'd you spring from, Tinkerbell? Is the professor here? Well, if the professor ain't here, who you with then? You ain't nothing to do with that city lawman, are you? <laughs> well... Seems like we all been led a real merry hold down by that witch. I did wonder about Slicker's second sight. Just didn't want to 
wonder for long enough, huh, Tinkerbell? Junior, you better not be a goner. Bring him here. Oh, Pa, I feel tired. I couldn't even poo. Just bring him. They last saw the professor heading to Lady de Montfort's house, and haven't seen him since. This is where Ghost Hunter moves into the realm of the unsettling. These ghost girls keep a teddy bear in tow that will fight us. This section has leaping halls to throw off your sense of direction. The game uses several horror tropes throughout to keep you on edge. I love this bit of putting the missing pieces back in place, allowing you to step through the painting back to the house. Returning to school, we get more information about our astral. Her name is Kate Heller, an assistant to Professor Brooks. We now get to further explore the school to find Hawksmoor and Anna. I love the school sections. An abandoned high school is a great horror setting. If they want to, they could have built the whole game around here. Take things more in a classic survival horror approach. Instead, it's only a fraction of Ghost Hunter's locations. We'll need to clear out the poltergeist to progress forward. As mentioned earlier, these are some of the game's better combat encounters. You have to get them out in the open with smoke to see them. Before we get the grenade launcher with the smoke attachment, we need to make use of the environment instead. While this section is more on the dark and eerie side of mood, things line up when we meet the ghost librarian. Look at it, Monitor! Just look at it! One page remaining! The final entry and the rest torn asunder! Shocking was the word! Now let me see if it was the last borrower! Oh yes, they won't fool this librarian! <gasps> Shock! Worse than that, ma'am. You don't mean pen in the margin. Well, Monitor, I suggest you read this final page and then return the book to the biography section. A couple books warp us to another time and give us more insight to who Hawksmoor was. A loyal knight to a king that others were envious of. Hawksmoor was responsible for the murder of the students at the school. Once again, Hawksmoor escapes with Anna. For us to follow him, we need to hunt more ghosts to power up the AI. Taking another trip through the portal, and hey, another excuse to get out of Detroit, we end up on a ghost ship with British World War II soldiers. Before we do, we get another great scene with Hawksmoor talking to unknown, unseen forces. Again, I don't know how they got Sir Michael Gambon as the role of Hawksmoor, but he adds so much to his character. You see yourself as the Parliament's protector, the judge. He does. The World War II ship is a much better showing of Ghost Hunter's strengths than the Swamp. It's a tighter, more focused section. The British-style humor is more evident in this level. Cambridge was the studio's home. With a surname of Fortescue and a missing left eye, this colonel is a descendant of Daniel Fortescue, the protagonist of the studio's previous work, Medieval. Stay back for the captain. Get back or I'll shoot. Don't shoot, man. Chap's on our side, you damn fool. He's just rescued me. Oh, good, sir. Very good, sir. Now, stand easy, you three, while I hatch a plan. On the same side, then, eh? Oh, dear. Oh, no, 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 can't fight with you. Don't know what I call you. Smudger. He could be Smudger. Smudger? 
only we lost our last smudge, you see. Cooked it the other day. Um, any of these any good? Uh, we've lost a ginger, pongo, chalky white, sponge, titch. Two titches? Uh, yeah, yeah, we lost two titches. And a lovely lad tees up. Always had a problem. Made a smashing brew tees up. Listen, my name's Lazarus Jones. Call me that. Okay, you men. Fall in. There's a great beast within the ship that we need to hunt. There's a more classic stealth section, where parts of it acts like a camera. The thing is, the stakes are once again low. Get caught? Well, keep on running. Their attacks do minimal damage. I have to also note the music track that plays during this stretch. The composer is going ham with twisting the knobs on the synthesizer. The boss of this level is a bit of a jump from previous encounters. Up until this point, I had yet to die in Ghost Hunter. The game begins to ramp up damage that enemies deal out from this point on. A prison on an island is our next stop. Most games tend to start off with their strongest levels first, but Ghost Hunter is the opposite. Levels get better as the game progresses. The astral sections here are more involved, and the game ramps up from the easy starting difficulty. While there's still humor throughout, this is the game's darkest level. To be fair, it is a prison after all. There's a stretch with the man on death row for the murder of his wife sending letters to his daughter. We can go back and visit her in a downer of a scene. Hey, it's okay. Shh. Where's mommy? Where's mommy? I'm so lonely, daddy. I'm so There's an interesting scene where we flash back and forth between Lazarus and the man on death row. This isn't a cutscene. We play this scene out. It's only a walking stretch. But it's interesting to see something like this from a game that's over 20 years old. These kind of scenes are a cliche these days. Ones we play from when a cutscene would have sufficed. As it's a one-time use here, it stands out from the rest of the game. And great use of it. Why did you do it, Agron? I thought about nothing else. And I can't tell you. I don't know what possessed me. How a police officer could care so little about human life, I just don't know. So, Aglan, I can't say I feel sorry for you, but on behalf of your fellow officers, all public servants, prison staff, true patriots, and all Americans, all I can say is this. You make me sick, and I hope you burn in hell. At last, we come face to face with the professor, the man we saw in the game's intro. This is where the game starts to amp up on cutscenes, both in number and in length. With the professor in tow, we get a fun dynamic between the two. His AI takes heavy cues from his personality, which are evident in these stretches. No, I mean, I'm all for recycling, but uh, yeah. Any ideas? No. Not even a name like uh, Maximus Heapus of Junkers? No. You don't say much when you're nervous, do you? Because I, I'm quite the opposite. I talk. Do you notice that? Yes. You want me to deal with this one? No, no, don't worry. I'm on a roll. And if you want, you can kill the professor. Now we're in the home stretch. The portal takes us to a secret military base in Arizona. Professor used to work here on research into the paranormal. But imagine if you had a spy, you could break in anywhere, undetectable, unstoppable, you could find anything, break anything, do anything. You mean, dun dun dun, a ghost spy. Exactly. What do you think the government would give for that? After everything you've seen, 
find it hard to believe? No, I just thought it was blasting away in a monster movie, and it turns out all along we're just in a good old-fashioned conspiracy thriller. Damn. You know, I would have played it a lot more moody. As smart as the professor can be, along with the AI he built, his pathfinding AI could use some work. There were a couple times I had to kill him to restart a checkpoint as he got stuck and he loves to run off ahead. It's easy to get lost in here with the winding halls with the same appearance. Professor and Kate worked on the experiment that turned Kate into an astral. Kate is not a ghost. The body and spirit are separate from one another. Professor wants to reunite them, bring them back. Why did the professor leave? With their research, the military got in contact with Hawksmoor who made them a deal. Gentlemen, you will never achieve your goals as things stand. The professor is merely competent, incapable of the ultimate prize. Why? Because he is a weak man, a civilian. He has too many scruples. Grant me the body of Kate Heller. Grant me the right to properly exploit Professor Richmond. All on my own terms, and I will deliver domination of your enemies for all eternity. I will be your night protector. As it seems like we're close to the final encounter, the game pulls the rug out from under us. It's too bad there was an odd emulation glitch with the lighting that popped up during this scene. This didn't pop up anywhere else. It's a distraction one of the most memorable moments of Ghost Hunter. The professor betrays us. He made a deal with Hawksmoor. He uses a machine to separate Kate's astral form from us. Look at you, searching for escape. Even now you're thinking, my gun, my weapons, my friends, there must be a way. There is no way. You see, this is the moment the living wake when they realize there's no one to pull them from the burning cup or save them from the stranger with a sparkling blade, the moment I am now squandered away, thinking there's always tomorrow, there's always a way. And then the fear as the blade sinks in, the fire burns, the bullet hits her. Under the control of Hawksmoor, Anna shoots Lazarus. We cut back to the main menu. Wait, did Lazarus die? Why does this menu look different than before? Well, surprise, it's a fake out ending. We're not done yet. We got to control the AI in a mech suit that wouldn't look out of place in Robocop. 23% probability of succeeding. Proceeding. I burst out laughing at this realization. You got me good, Ghost Hunter. This should now be a power trip to the finish line. The guns we have rip ghosts to shreds. The problem is with our armor. We move at a far slower pace than Lazarus. Dodging attacks from ghosts is far harder. If you're not careful, they can make short work of you. We now take control of Lazarus in astral form, at which point I got lost for several minutes trying to figure out where to go next. you think I'd go talk to the professor, but that's not the case. At least the music was great during the stretch. Using the resurrection machine, Lazarus comes back to life. Fitting name, and this took less than four days. Our last fight is a long wave of enemies that we fought throughout the game, with Hawksmoor being the last one. It's a disappointment as a final boss. The bosses throughout Ghost Hunter have been decent. Good use of the game mechanics, each with a different twist. There isn't much to this fight beyond a long slog of enemy waves. Professor sets off a zero bomb, a military weapon to obliterate ghosts as Lazarus and Anna escape. This seems to destroy the base along with it. Although in a bummer, this seems to kill off Kate as well. It would have been nice if she returned to her human form for one last goodbye, or if she escaped with us. Lazarus and Anna return to Detroit, never to speak of what happened again. Besides, who would believe them? To be fair, it is Detroit after all. I'm sure they've seen stranger things. Homicide, carjacking, narcotics, illegal parking, noisy neighbors, dog fouling. Hey, it's a jungle out here, partner. You know back there? You shot me. You killed me. And your point is? Took you two shots. I need a partner who can do the job I want. <laughs> and so ends Ghost Hunter. It has some interesting ideas with the ghost capturing system and astral control. That said, it falls short in its execution and what these systems bring to the table. While gameplay is solid, it falls short of what I'd call great. Some control issues hold it back. That said, the solid writing and cast of characters help make up for its shortcomings. It's one of the better games I've played in getting humor right. It knows how to pull off the silly and the nonsensical, yet knows when to get serious. It could turn to the dark and unsettling on a moment's notice without major tonal whiplash. It's a great balance between the humor and the horror. 
it's something that modern games can take a look at for a better understanding of how to incorporate humor from a simpler time. It's not a level of quality where it's criminal and how overlooked it is, but Ghost Hunter offers an experience that should have gotten more recognition. Thanks for watching. If you haven't, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things the YouTube algorithm likes. If you'd like to support the channel further, consider becoming a patron member or a YouTube member. We'll get access to videos earlier, get periodic updates, and be featured in the forthcoming credits.